Now let's find the absolute maximum and the absolute minimum of f of x on this interval. And to do that, I'll get started by taking the derivative of the function, setting it equal to 0, so we can find the critical numbers. So we're going to need to use the product rule. The derivative of x is 1 times e to the x plus x times the derivative of e to the x, which is just e to the x. And of course, that was just the product rule in action. 1 times e to the x is e to the x plus x e to the x. Now we're setting it equal to 0. And we want to solve for x. So I can factor out an e to the x. I'm going to have 1 plus x, right? Because e to the x divided by e to the x is just 1 and x times e to the x divided by e to the x is just x. Great. So e to the power of x is never equal to 0. But if I plug in a negative 1 for x, we would get 0 overall. Because 0 times e to the x is just 0. So that is our critical number. And that is within the interval. That's between negative 2 and 0. And that's great. So now we're interested in finding the values of the extremities as well as the critical number to find the absolute maximum and the absolute minimum. So f of negative 2 is going to be negative 2 e to the power of negative 2 or negative 2 over e squared, which is roughly equal to negative 0. Point. 2707. Of course, I just didn't do this in my head. I did it before with the calculator. Just in case you were wondering, what about f of negative 1? That'll be negative 1 e to the power of negative 1 or negative 1 over e, which is approximately equal to um, negative 0 0.36. Six, seven, nine, and f of zero is just going to be zero to the sorry zero times e to the power of zero, which is zero. So this is the lowest value, and that's the highest value. So there's an absolute minimum at x equals negative one and an absolute maximum at x equals 0. That's it.